what's up tribe how you guys doing go ahead and hit that subscribe button i hope you like this video this is your review for chasing la season one episode four what are we on episode four child yeah yeah we're on episode four so we pick up where we left off last week we are at the top of the mountain okay we have all made it to the top and we are taking out our affirmations or whatever it is that we want to leave at the top of the mountain whatever Jayla and Alicia announced to everybody that they have made up, and I'm here for it. Thank you. I appreciate it. We're going to get back to the two of them at the end of this episode. And Jayla speaks on the fact that she wants to, you know, just let go of um, the drama and the beef, that life is too short, um, and that she's glad that her and Alicia are in a better place, and that she just wants to, you know, get past all of the, the cattiness and the messiness type of thing. So then Andre decides to speak, and Andre says, listen, I want to let go of the pettiness. You know, I'm a work in progress, and I know that when I feel like I'm disrespected or slighted, that I go from zero to 100, and I just want to let go of that pettiness because I know that I can be King Petty. Now, something else went down before I go there. There was this whole little exchange where Jeremy slapped Jayla on the ass. Jayla made a comment about she going to steal D. Hawkins, man. And D. Hawkins was like, who? Who, man? Where my man at? My man here? And Jeremy was like, I don't know what she talking about because I'm single. Last I checked. Now... We know that they was saying that Jeremy and D. Hawkins was doing this little flirty, flirty thing or whatever. And it seemed like, I feel like Jeremy was flirting with Jayla in that moment when he did the little slap on the ass thing. See, Jayla, I, I really need more people to stop worrying about what's going on with other people and just worry about what's going on with you. In that moment, I feel like Jeremy was giving you a little flirty moment. Just roll with it, girl. I turn around and toot it out a little bit more and let him, let him slap it again and be like, call me when we get to the bottom of this damn mountain. Don't be worried about what's going on with him and D. Hawkins. That ain't your business. I'm just saying. Moving on. Um, so, I feel like everybody was like, yes, Andre, okay, great. But then Andre gets back up or have it's edited. He turns to Alicia and says, I do feel like I need to get this off my chest. I mean, since we are all here right now, I feel like we need to talk about this. What we need to talk about? He wants to know, want Alicia to clear up what she said about the whole coke rumors. Listen, Alicia made a comment about somebody doing coke. Alicia told Andre, I wasn't talking about you. She said, I wasn't talking about you. Andre wants her to say it again from the mountaintop, say it in English, French, Swahili, Portuguese, Spanish. Like, I don't know what else Andre wants from Alicia in that moment. And Alicia was like, listen, I done said it once, I done said it twice, I done said it three times. I don't know how many more times I can say it. I won't talk about you. Now, I understand where Andre is coming from. Andre was like, listen, I have a brand. I have a business, and I can't have my name associated with anything dealing with Coke. I get that. I get it. Don't nobody want their name associated with Coke. But she said it. She said it wasn't you. We had a whole two episodes of us. I never even thought that you thought it was about you. Because we done had two whole episodes where we know, listen. Anyway. It turned into a whole messy moment. And the person that just got finished saying that they wanted to stop being petty turned it into a whole petty moment. Anyway, um, so that's what it is. Hershey, once again, is my VIP. Hershey was laying on that damn yoga mat doing doing um, her his yoga poses. And Hershey was like, listen, did I really drop, did I really climb all the way to the mountain for us to get nothing resolved? Like, I thought we were in a better place. I thought we had all made up. I thought we was good. So clearly, I did all of that for nothing. And I, now I'm on the top of this damn mountaintop. And we still arguing. I feel the same way, Hershey. I feel the same way. The next scene we have is Jeremy celebrating the one-year anniversary of his company. I think it's called Shop Him. Like, shot Because at first I thought he was saying shock him. And I was like, oh, okay, shock him. And then he was like, no, shop him. And I, I feel like it's an online boutique. He said that, you know, Fashion Nova, I'm coming for you. So I feel like it's along the lines of, it's in that realm of, of what a Fashion Nova gives. And I'm here for it. He said it's a one-year anniversary. You know, starting a business is hard. 
starting a business in COVID is harder. So I'm here for it. You know, that you started your business. It's still here a year later. All I'm going to say, though, is, listen. And, and Dario, I love you dearly, sir. But his confessional, he said the same thing four times. We only need to hear once. But he was shooting a commercial, which we ended up seeing later on in the episode. So that was cool. I'm here for it. That was great. I'm happy for you. It is an accomplishment. Listen, at the end of the day, I'm always here when y'all are working. I'm always here when y'all are showing us what you're chasing. I'm always here when we see that you guys' visions are coming to fruition. I'm here for it. Next, we had... A scene with D. Hawkins and King, is it Ian? The battle rapper? Oh, let me clear a few things up. So, shouts out to King Payne, King Ian, and Hershey LaCour. Was anybody else? Who um, left comments under my videos. I appreciate it. Um, Hershey was saying, listen, because, um, Alicia dropped her receipts that she has worked at the same establishment with her. She worked her. She said, listen, my bad. I was wrong. I ain't know. And you know what I can appreciate? I can appreciate that she said, my bad. I was wrong. I ain't know. So thank you for clean, you know, for, for dropping that. And she put, I, it, it was also on the Chasing Reality Instagram where she said, you know, I, I didn't know. And I, you know, my bad. I ain't know. Okay. Um, King, is it in yeah, y'all? I know y'all gonna get me together in the comments. He said that he was not throwing no shots at Lil' Kendra. Okay. Okay. He said it was an honorable mention. It was an honorable mention of you throwing a shot. It can be both. Like, I feel like, I feel like y'all, okay, I'm about to go down the wrong road. Okay, back to this, back to this. But he left a comment, thank you, appreciate it for coming through. And King Payne left a comment, thank you for coming through. King, me and King Payne had a whole conversation under my video. It was, it was funny, it was funny. Thank you for coming through. Anyway, back to this. So, um, he is having to shoot for his, um, men's line, his, like, body butter men's line, his skincare, um, line, and again, I always am gonna give credit where credit is due, he is shooting a whole commercial, which we saw later on in the episode as well, um, for his line, and it looks like, um, it looks like Andre provided the clothing for the, co the commercial from his, um, company, um, shop him, so I'm here for all of this, like, this, I'm here for all of that, okay, now, him and D. Hawkins ended up having a conversation, and I felt like he was going down the checklist of all of the people and was like, well, what do you think about this person? What do you think about that person? What do you think about that person? What do you think about that person? And I felt like it was a little messy because I was like, you don't even know half these. Like, you have not even met half these people because, at least on screen, we ain't seen you with half these people because we saw you in that one scene last week with Andre and Fran, and that is it. So why are you asking about Jayla? Why are you asking about... Um, um, King Payne. Why, like, why are you asking about all these people, sir? Anyway. Whatever. Next, D. Hawkins invited everybody to come down to the studio for his studio session. Now, let me say this. Again, the editing of this scene confused the fuck out of me. And I'm gonna tell you why. At the beginning of the scene, we see D. Hawkins in the studio with Quan. Um, doing his, um, you know, doing his poem and everything. And Jayla comes in, and yes, Jayla is loud, and Jayla is doing the most. We see D. Hawkins come out of the booth and basically sort of chastise them a little bit. Like, listen, I appreciate y'all being here. I thank you for y'all being here. Um, but, like, y'all a little loud. Y'all doing the most. I really, you know, I'm nervous as hell right now. I need y'all to chill out. I need y'all to calm down. Let me get through this, and then I, I'll come and talk to y'all. Now, when they showed that scene, King Payne was there, Fran, Jayla, and I, 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 and Quan, right? So after he does that, he goes back in the booth. The next thing you know, we see Jayla, D. Hawkins, and Fran in the hallway talking, and they're talking about, um, they're talking about, um, um meeting up with um 
then and how he was sort of being a little messy and asking about, you know, all the different people. At least that's how, you know, D. Hawk is perceived it as being a little messy. He was talking to Fran um, about something. And so then they asked, well, have you seen or talked to anybody else from the group? And they brought up King Payne. And he was like, well, you know, I haven't talked to King Payne since. Er? King Payne was just in the damn studio. So what it looks like is that this was edited out of sequence. Because while they're out there talking, King Payne does walk up. So I feel like that scene with D. Hawkins chat, like kind of, you know, fussing at them happened after this conversation in the hallway but then at the end of this conversation in the hallway d hawkins says okay y'all y'all can go now i gotta get back in the booth i got one more hour that i'm paying for and i need to go finish it up and i only need you and kwan i mean you i only need kwan here because everybody else can go you know da, 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 da. so i'm like well then so when did you yell at them when did that happen because you said you hadn't talked to King Payne, but King Payne was clearly in that damn studio. But then at the end, you put them out and say, bye, nice, you know, thank you for coming by. I appreciate it. So what the fuck? I'm so... Ugh! While they in the hallway, the other thing that had confused it in me was King Payne walks up and starts talking about he got a beef to pick with D. Hawkins. D. Hawkins talking about some, yeah, I got a beef to pick with you too. Well, what did you hear? King Payne said, King Payne was like, well, what did what did you say? And he was like, well, what did you hear me say? And then he said, well, listen, for future reference, if you think you heard anything from me, come to me. Because if I said it, I'll repeat it, you know. But, you know, a lot of times people just be making up stuff and saying stuff. And I ain't say it and clear the air. And it was something along the lines of, well, I heard that you didn't even want me to come to the studio. And D. Hawkins said, well, listen, let's be clear, because of COVID, I could only invite a certain number of people. And then D. Hawkins breaks the fourth wall and says, well, I didn't invite you because I was trying to invite people who I haven't filmed a scene with before. And I fi I filmed multiple scenes with you. And so I was inviting people who I hadn't filmed a scene with, but Jayla wasn't sure if she could come because she was in Vegas. And so-and-so wasn't sure if they could come because of such and such. And so, yes, I did extend the invitation to you because then I had an extra spot because I could only invite a certain number of people. So as a viewer, I am now privy to the fact that D. Hawkins only invited people based on who he felt he needed to do a scene with, not who he felt could help him in the studio. Because if King Payne is a producer and Jayla is a vocalist and Fran is a vocalist, you could have just left it at, well, I was trying to invite people who I thought had the mindset and could give me some pointers or could hear some things because they have that musical ear. And I wasn't sure how many people I could invite because of COVID. But when Jayla wasn't sure she could come, I extended the invitation to you. But yes, I wanted you to be here. Just wasn't sure how I could make it. But y'all ain't have to break the fourth wall and tell me that this whole thing is just calculated and based off of who you done filmed the scene with. Because then it just takes away some of the meaning of who you invited and why. Because then D. Hawkins says in his confessional, well, you know why I invited you. And everybody I invited, I invited for a purpose. And you know why. Yeah, because you needed a scene with them. Not because they have a musical ear. Not because they can help you and make this a better record. And that's what I got from it. Now, y'all put it, listen, correct me if I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm saying it wrong. I'm saying it different than the way y'all saw it. But, okay. Um, King Payne is inviting him to the launch of his business. I, I'm being fair. I didn't hear what King Payne said. He said what the business was. I didn't hear it. He said what the business was. Um, I think he said hair care. I think. But I'm not sure. But the invitations were cute. He had them in a little bag with a little tissue paper. I feel like he was giving them like a little, like, it was cute. You know, when you get invited to them high-end industry parties, you know, the invitations be real special, real pretty. You know, they don't be sending out them old evites like we do. Remember, you used to get, remember everybody was doing evites for a long time and 
You would just get this random ass email for an invite to some old random party chat. Anyway. But it was cute. I don't know what was in the bag because nobody actually took anything out the bag while I was watching. But it was a cute concept that he showed up with the invitations. And that's how we got on the whole conversation with him and D. Hawkins because he was like, I shouldn't even give you your invitation. So anyway, whatever. D. Hawkins was in full geech, okay? D. Hawkins was in full drag um, in, 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 um, in his confessional. And I'm going to say this. I am no makeup guru. But D. Hawkins, I don't know who did your makeup. And your confessional. I loved your look. I ain't gonna lie. I loved that look. I wasn't crazy about the makeup. I'm just gonna be honest. I don't mean that as no type of slight. Because I thought you was... I was loving the look. Wasn't loving the makeup. And the way that makeup artist had your face dusted last week. Bitch. That's who you should have got to do your makeup for that confessional. Anyway, moving on. Then we had this great scene at the end. This very touching scene at the end. With Alicia and Jayla. First of all, let me say this. Alicia, bitch, you look so good. Girl, I was loving that wig. I was loving that makeup. I was loving how you had the tatas out. Girl, you looked good, okay? You looked good. They met up at a beauty salon. Jayla said, you know, I wanted to invite you to a girl's, you know, little girl's thing. And instead of us going to, like, a bar and just having drinks, I wanted to invite you here. This is a friend of mine's shop. She's a trans woman as well. This is a safe space for us. It's a place where we could just come in, let our hair down, talk about how we need to talk, be as free as we need to be. Now, in the midst of them talking, we got to hear um, some heartbreaking stories from both of them. And let me say this, Alicia. You know, you my DMV sister. I live here. I remember this story. I, I didn't know it was you until this episode. But a couple of years ago, I think it was last year or the year before last, um, there was a story about a trans woman who was attacked um, at a gas station like early in the early morning. It was Alicia. Alicia said she was attacked by seven men. She was leaving her job at the time. She was a manager of a bar. So it was like three o'clock in the morning. She was leaving and she was on her way home. And they jumped her at the gas station. And I can only imagine everything that she went through, the mental and the physical scars, to get attacked by seven men. I mean, it's 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 a one it's 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 by God's grace that you're here. It's because let's be clear if they wanted you to not be here, you wouldn't be. So it's a God's grace that you're here. So you definitely have a testimony. And she said, You know, I, you know, I probably was, you know, she said, That's made me a very quiet person. That's made me to be, that's made me a very, uh, let me be very mindful of my surroundings, very mindful of who's, who I'm around, what I'm saying, and my, you know, and I observe a lot. You know, because of that experience, because of what I went through, like, I, I, I observe a lot. Um, I don't know when she moved to Atlanta. I mean, I said Atlanta, Lord. I don't know when she moved to LA. But again, that that was a very, that, I, I remember that story. I, I absolutely remember that story. And I'm glad to see you are well. Um, and again, I hope you're getting with the help you need to help you recover from that experience. And I'm sorry about it. And then Jayla went on to talk about how she got jumped at a pool party last year and how the girls just jumped her because I guess they, they ain't like her. Maybe she was being too loud. Maybe they thought she thought she was cute. You know, it, people don't need a good reason when they just want to do something that do something evil. People don't need no good reason. And, you know, so then they had a whole conversation about, you know, how women aren't safe. She said, those girls didn't even know I was a trans woman. They just attacked me because they ain't like me for whatever reason they didn't like me, you know. And so they had a whole conversation about, you know, trans women and protecting trans women and being safe. Um, and um just black women in general so it was a moment it was a great scene it was probably the best scene um i feel like that was probably the one of the best scenes out of these four episodes honestly and i appreciate the fact that jayla and alicia had a rocky beginning but i hope i really really hope that this is the foundation of them being cool for the remainder of the season at least cordial oh gosh please y'all please don't revert don't go back don't go back this was a moment, this was a scene, and I was here for it. Anyway, that is Chasing um, LA. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Drop it in those comments, peace.